Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to the place to be on a Sunday night where Top Split TV brings you round one of season 20 of the Sunday Night Lights. I'm your host, Alex McKellar, and joining me once again back in the booth for season 20 is Mr. Corey Steinhauser. Corey, uh, massive night of racing here ahead, biggest strength of field of the week, free track, first week of a new season. What more could you ask for? Well, all we can ask for from here, Alex, is some great racing on track. I am glad to be back. It's been a long two weeks without the broadcast for me, obviously, because I didn't, uh, I wasn't able to come in and commentate with you for the last race of last season. It's great to be back. And I see we have an absolute bumper crop of drivers here tonight, Alex, including one Mr. Tim Gorkrocher as the one-plated car. Mr. Timmy G back in the house, yeah, joining us for the first round of a new season, setting a, a good time there to begin with. No, just his outlap, of course. These guys get, uh, the, this is one of those tracks where the line is after the start finish line is after the pit exit, so uh, they'll set a dud time the first time round and then start look to set their two fast laps. Of course, in quality here tonight, Seb Schultz is back again, as is Benny Simonson uh, from UK and I. Uh, Lee Anderson is UK and I compatriot, also joining us. And the fifth plated car, as we round out your top five seeds, is Manuel Lucetta joining us once again, all the way from Italy tonight, Corey. Yeah, that's right, Alex. And what's amazing about the top five that we have assembled here? is that all of them are 5K drivers or above. So we definitely got a lot of very experienced drivers in the field. But that's not to discount our other drivers, including the six-plated car of Pablo Espez, who has just gone to the top of the timetables on the first lap with a 21.642. Very good lap there. Uh, Jack Belden in the 18-plated car has gone for P2 with a 21.963, Alex. So uh, not bad first laps coming in through at the moment. Yeah, absolutely, 19 plated, 18 plated car, second last car in this field up near the top. Uh, the UK and I driver making his debut Sunday Night Lights appearance and doing it in style at this stage. Christian Perez, Perez, he's back for another season, another crack of the title, perhaps hoping to uh, stake his claim for the overall season championship. Of course, our our uh, our season SNL and Skip Barber official season winner uh, Benjamin Smith not here tonight from what I can see, uh, but certainly demonstrating based on his victory in both last season that uh, this is the race to be in each week because it really is a platform to launch a local driver to the top of the pop scoring. Well, that's exactly right, Alex, and that is you know the main reason why we want to put on these races is to show off to the world you know how good some of these drivers are and to say look we've got the best of the best racing here if you want to be the best you've got to get yourself into this race and uh tonight's definitely no disappointment as we've got 14 cars that have laid laps down so far and uh, a lot of them will be just about to come across to finish their second laps here alex yeah anderson has jumped to the top of the pops just ahead of uh, Simpson, though, Grebstad, the Team Ovaltine driver, he's dropped to 21.5. Uh, he's uh, provisionally at least on pole at this stage. Espez coming back for another run. He's sitting in uh, P5 at the moment as he rounds the final corner. What has the Iberian got for us on this, his second lap, no doubt? Didn't really use all the track on exit there. And I think he might have uh, he might have bailed on that one because uh, he's just winding down uh, to a slow finish there. But uh, Ben Snell, who of course joined us in the commentary booth for the final week, uh, he's back on the other side of the camera tonight out there on track. He's currently sitting in P10. Not a bad effort from Mr. Snell. Car plate number 10. Oh, I beg your pardon. Car plate number 10. He's sitting in eighth. I've undersold him there. Uh, he's, uh, of course, another one of the Team Milo drivers there. Great to see Matthew Thomas, an ANZ driver there, currently in P12, the 15 plated car. One of the uh, really early days M&L drivers. Uh, he's joined us once again. What can he do this time round? Let's see. What's he done? He's done a 21.606. Uh, not quite getting him up the top of the pops, but certainly in the top five, Corey. Well, that's right, Alex. And the top five at 
uh, this particular track is definitely one that's going to be very advantageous as uh, you know, there can be a lot of drama on the first lap, especially since we've got such a long run down to a tight little hairpin. And uh, the further up the front you are, you know, generally the better off you're going to be when it comes to escaping all the drama. But there can also be something said about staying at the back of the pack, which I noticed that uh, Christian Kabanka has not laid down a lap, Alex. So uh, maybe he's playing the opposite strategy and trying to uh, use his position at the back to make sure he can dodge around all the wrecks. Potentially, yeah, you're right. Not set a time yet as uh, the American driver, Kabanka, joining us, of course, in the wee hours of Sunday morning, his time uh, to, to make his appearance in this field for the start of the new season. Start of the new season typically means a free track, so there's a few unfamiliar names in this field here tonight uh, making their debut in Sunday Night Lights, but uh, hopefully the action will be there are plenty. Of course, turn one, as we see Anderson make his way down to that very corner this time around. This we see most of the overtaking there, and perhaps at uh, turn five uh, before you hit the uh, very uh, complicated or technical twisty section out the back through six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, it's not an overly complicated circuit here, but it is challenging in parts, particularly corner like here at turn three as we see Anderson going through with about 20 seconds of quality left. Uh, you want to get a nice clean run out of there because it is a long run down into turn five, which is probably your second best passing opportunity into this heavy threshold breaking zone as you see Anderson going through this time round. But that, folks, will about do us for quali. So we might just uh, run through our grid for this round one of season 20, Sunday Night Lights. Benny Simonson managing to hang on to pole there from UK and I with a 21-2. Fantastic time in quality from Benny Hawk and Grebstad relegated for Team Ovaltine to P2 off the grid. UK and I's Lee Anderson in third position as we head off tonight. Tim Gorkrocher for Top Slit Racing. He's back in the field managing to start from P4 tonight. New ANZ's Matthew Thomas. Great to see him back starting out of P5 tonight. Christian Perez from Iberia out of P6. P7 tonight. Sebastian Schultz joining us once again. Iberia's Pablo Espes for R70 team out of P8. P9 tonight. Ben Snell for Team Milo. The first of the Team Milo drivers here tonight. Jack Bladen from UK and I out of P10. Team Milo's John Skoltz out of P11. His team boss for Team Milo, Russell Clark, out of P12. Just going over the page. Thrustmaster Mivano's Enzo Cantor out of 13th tonight off the grid. Quinton Mikau is how I'm going to pronounce that. <laughs> He's out of 14th. Uh, Sist Yeron. Hartvelt. Hartvelt tonight out of P15. Join us for the first time. Rodrigo Cano Alcares. He's out of 16th, 17th. Manuel Loqueda from Italy. Bruce Giacavello. Oh, man, that's going to kill me all night. P18, the ANZ driver. Chris Cabanca for Breaking Bad Motorsports out of 19th. Strength of field, 38-49. Top of the week. Uh, track temp tonight, 24 degrees. Should be an interesting one here tonight, Corey. That's exactly right, Alex. And uh, judging by the names that we got sitting there, uh, it's definitely going to be an interesting night for us up here in the booth as everyone should be just about getting on the grid. We'll be waiting on green. I think we're just waiting on John Skultz to grid up and then we'll be ready to go. Yeah, as they grab a gear, uh, the starter takes his mark. Red lights mean rev. Green lights mean go, and we are away for the first race of season 20 of the Sunday Night Lights with uh, Simonson making his way down to the turn one for the first time. Grebstad, side by side, they're going to go. Quite a few of these guys are going to go side by side into turn one. Can they all get through? Good so far. The two Mivano drivers out the back. They've managed to keep out of each other's way by the looks. No. Wasn't a Mivano, there was only one of them in there. Uh, the other one's out the back a bit further. But meanwhile, they seem to be getting through now as that run through turn three. Oh, we've lost a stack of them through turn three. Oh, Gorkrocher, he's, uh, he's, oh, I'll tell you what, we're going to have another look at that. Let's go back and grab uh, what's happened here out of turn three. See what happens. They've come in in a big pack. 
Anyone coming too hot? No. Oh, a little bit of echo there with Thomas and Gorecrotcher. And Gorecrotcher spun around. And the field is just scattered uh, like marbles in the start of a match there. And uh, only Gorecrotcher really uh, come off second best there. Everyone else seems to have been able to keep on with it, Corey. Yeah, everyone did an amazing job to get around Timmy G while he was uh, spinning there. But uh, at the moment, at the front of the pack, it's going oh, to remain to be one. our posted. Oh, the back of the pack. I just saw that unfolding. Skultz. I think that's uh, Skultzy. Oh, no, not Skultzy. Yeah, it was, mate. He's coming into the final corner here. We're just grabbing a replay this time round. Very easy to lose the rear of the car through here in the early stages of the lap, particularly if you, yeah, just grab the outside rear on the dirt there, I think, was Skultzy, and uh, that's cost him his position. Look at them all scrambling again to sort of get and take advantage. They went five wide there briefly, the trailing cars there, and uh, unfortunately just Skultz there uh, missing out, as we see Grebstad now out the front leading the UK and I driver of Benny Simonson, Corey. And right behind them is Lee Anderson in that uh, beautifully, I'm going to say pinky purple. Well, it's probably more purple than it is pink at the moment with the uh, weight of the sun's hitting it. Sitting there in third. These three are getting line to stern and they're, I'm thinking they're going to try and pull away from the pack here. But Christian Perez sitting there uh, in fourth. Might want to have something to say about that. He wouldn't want these three to uh, get on their own devices and get away, especially not with Benny Simonson being up there in the front of the pack as everyone runs very wide. Simonson taking the dirt track line, a man after my own heart in that respect there. And now Lee Anderson up into P2. He's going to challenge Hawk on for the lead here, going down into turn one, Alex. I'm going to go Puce. Puce car up the inside there with uh, Perez now, taking advantage of that Simonson mistake. Oh, they've left Grebstad out to dry here. Will Simonson look to take advantage as well? Meanwhile, out the back, you've got Snell sitting there in P5 all the while looking to get amongst it. Grebstad just has enough room. Simonson just lifts slightly to get the uh, Norwegian driver enough room through there uh, to make this line of stern, but that has brought Snell right back into it. This now five-car battle for the lead. They've got a small gap back to Espes, about eight tenths, which is not enough to drop the Iberian driver. And in fact, we might now be back to a pack of nine and, and almost 10 with Clark. In fact, I'll tell you what, you can throw a blanket over the top 13 drivers here tonight before we see too much of a gap and that's uh, what this, this sort of track and this sort of car combination will bring out, Corey. Well, that's exactly right, Alex. I mean, we've got three straights, including this uh, shorter straight here, which leads onto the main straight, that, um, you know, they're very big drafting areas, and, you know, we're going to see a lot of two and three wide coming out of them as uh, Enzo Cantor making his way out of the pits just as the leaders were getting to him. Another challenge for the lead, which we're going to see a lot of, as Christian Perez goes up the inside of Anderson into turn one. Is Anderson going to let, be left out to dry here? Simonson's up on his inside as well. And what does Hawkon do? Can Hawkon... Oh, they're staying side by side there for second. This is going to leave Anderson in a good spot because he's still side by side, although he did lift to allow Simonson through. I was going to say, if he wanted to challenge for that second, he could have there. And he runs a little bit wide, does Anderson. Into the dirt on one side and the grass on the other. Here comes Hawkon now, challenging for third. These guys are turning up the action already, Alex, and we're only on lap number four. These guys jostling for positions, clearly, for uh, the later stages of this race. Oh, as we see Snell making room for Espes, to, who poked the nose up the inside at six there and gets the job done on the a leading ANZ driver, of course, is young Ben Snell. Uh, focusing on Anderson now, who's tucked into P3 behind Simerson and Perez. And Perez now, uh, oh, I'll tell you what, he's leading a, a very active Betty Simerson. Simerson there looking to show the nose, but also potentially break the draft. Although he's only five tenths of a second ahead of uh, Lee Anderson there in the Puce Mobile there, the car four, just ahead of the fourth place, Grebstad. And behind, you can still see plenty of action in the background. These guys line astern 
down to P6 in Ben Snell. That took just one lap to break up what was almost a 13 car train into a lead pack of six. And you will see plenty of jostling for position here tonight as guys try to set them up for the later stages, set themselves up for the later stages of the race because uh, you've got to be up near the front really to, uh, to get the win at the end. You've got to be in the top two or three positions to really make it count. And that's exactly right, Alex. And that's why these guys were jostling so hard for these positions early. Because once you get into a position, once they get single filed out like this, you know, they tend to want to stay in that until the last two or three laps. Just so, oh, and I think we got a uh, issue in the back. Uh, I was focused on crashes for a second. I can see uh, Heartbelt in the background. He was uh, off in the grass at turn five, Alex. Yeah, let's uh, duck back and see if we can't grab a quick replay. Easy to do into five. Whoa, something's happened there. Let's see if we can't get a better angle of it. Canter, by the looks, is it? Into the rear. Yeah, bang. Straight into the rear. See you later. That's all she wrote. Canter, already been through the pits here tonight. Uh, the 17 car of Hartvelt, uh, I don't know if it was brake failure or something there from Cantor, but that's uh, that's his night done and dusted, and Hartvelt, his competitive night's over for sure. As we jump back up the front, and we still have this pack of six cars led by Simonson this time round with uh, Snell and Grebstad. The Battle of the Chocolate Drinks relegated to fifth and sixth at this stage, Corey. That's exactly right, Alex, but knowing these guys, they're not going to sit around back there for too long. At least uh, in Hawkon's case, he'd want to be trying to lead this pack from the front, which we saw earlier. But uh, Benny Snell, we know that he's a very patient driver. Um, when it comes to pack racing like this, he doesn't want to try and ruin his position at the front of the pack in any way, shape or form. So he'll probably just stay there, tagged onto the back of this pack, and hopefully um, the 18-plated car of Bolden doesn't catch up to him. But uh, he'll just be waiting and biding his time. And you know, when the last couple of laps happen and these guys do start really racing, if they start taking each other out, Ben Snell knows that he's going to be in a great position to try and take advantage of that, Alex. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the two uh, the two Milo and uh, Oval team boys up front there, and they'll be sitting there patiently. The question is how patient will they be as we see Perez now looking to take the lead of this race from Simonson. Simonson leaving plenty of room. Is Anderson going to go with him or is he just going to tuck him behind? This time around he's going to tuck him behind. SP is taking the tight line into turn one. Shortcuts the apex. What sort of exit will he get there as we see Simonson and Anderson the two UK and I drivers looking to make room, uh, seeing if they can't make this a three instead of a six car battle. I'll tell you what, there were a couple of rear right tyres looking very sketchy on the grass on the entrance to three there. Could spell danger, but these guys using every millimetre of the track to their advantage tonight. Well, they're using every millimetre of track and then some, Alex. I mean, we've already seen Simerson, uh showing off his dirt tracking skills in the final corner. These guys are going to be doing everything they can to try and not do that. But when you're pushing this hard, the margins are so fine that, you know, mistakes will happen and once or twice they might fall off the track, which uh, in iRacing will incur you a 1x penalty. You accumulate 17 of those and uh, you are going to be facing a disqualification. But these guys at the front of the pack know the risks and uh, they're quite happy to deal with them as uh, I'm going to go check back on this second pack now, which is being led by the two-plated car of Sebastian Schultz. Uh, currently a five-car pack at the moment. Manuel Lucetta is in there. So is uh, Mikau, I think uh, was the way that you pronounced it. But uh, they're starting to battle pretty hard here for what is the seventh position, Alex? Kind of battle in two spectrums here. You've got uh, the front pack of six, They've broken away. You've got uh, this second pack with Lucetta trying to make his presence known behind uh, behind Schultz here. Up the inside of him, as you say, you've got uh, Bladen this time round. And he's uh, the 18 car here tonight. We saw him very high up in the uh, qualification standings briefly. But uh, he's getting shuffled down now as uh, Mikau comes through again. Breaking up the inside. I'll tell you what, that's going to be messy there. Three cars. Oh, I'll tell you what, there was some contact. Uh, it looks like Schultz had missed his braking marker somewhat and uh, paid the price. Let's go back and take a look and see what we can 
find out by way of replays there. You see Schultz, they're all on the very narrow line. The rear of Schultz's car stepping out as he got the braking all sorts of wrong. Luketa, big nudge there between him and the 16 car of Mikau. They all seem to have got away with it, Corey. All of them are uh, getting the droids. A little bit of help there we saw on Schultz's car, but they all seem to have survived to fight another day. That's right, Alex. They have. Uh, I continued watching them, and uh, all five of them indeed still going on. Um, Bolden is uh, second in this pack to... Oh, as uh, I don't think anyone's going to be surviving. That one, Luchetta, getting absolutely launched there by Macau into turn one. Uh, these guys... Uh, starting to push really hard, Alex. We're not even halfway yet. In fact, uh, we're going to be at halfway next time around, and uh, these guys are already fighting like it's the last lap. I don't think that's a very wise strategy on their parts. Oh, I tell you what, I think Lucetta probably got his braking a little bit wrong and uh, left it late enough such that he couldn't pull it up to turn in time. And as, uh, as uh, what do we say, Bladden, I think it was, going through, picked up the rear, started turning in with uh, the uh, Thrustmaster driver still there. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, that's cost him. Both of them seemingly getting away okay as far as damage goes, although Luketa's now missing the front half of his car, to be fair. So we jump back up to the front pack now. We have Simonson out in front of Perez with Espes. Tell you what, the two Iberian drivers making their presence felt here as we see uh, Snell run a little bit wide now. Espes taking a defensive line from Anderson into turn one. Espes not wanting to give up that third position, albeit, uh, uh, as you say, as we commence the second half. Oh, again, takes that title line. I tell you what, you're relying there on big breaks. And uh, the guys outside, you're judging that room correctly. As we see now, Anderson coming up into three, uh, and he's getting it right, hopefully, as uh, these guys really are jostling for positions. The thing, the risk that they run, of course, is that Simonson and Perez, both of, who have, both of whom have outstanding pace, can drive away with this one. Well, that's exactly right, Alex. And if you were Anderson and Espez, you wouldn't want to be trying to fight too hard for third right now. Uh, Anderson uh, backed out of that as they were coming to turn three. Uh, but, you know, at the moment, you know, you'd want to try and keep a nice, calm pace. Yeah, you know, leapfrog if you can, but, uh, you know, don't look too much into it. You know, just try and stay line to turn behind the two guys in front, which uh, looks like they're starting to do now. But, you know, all bets will be off when they get back onto the front straight again is uh, the guess that I'm going to hazard here as Simmonson. And missed the apex there a little bit of the final corner. It's not going to affect him too much. And uh, Perez now pulling over to the right side of the track just to break that draft. He's not wanting to fight over position. He just wants to sit there in P2 for now. Very smart play. He's going to be waiting for that one to fill later on in the race, Alex. So, uh, you know, Perez with the 200 IQ there. And uh, maybe the two guys behind just need to chill out a little bit here. Yeah, two by two they go in the pack behind now, led by Bladden, as we said. Uh, and you've got Schultz now looking to get back to where he was previously. And uh, Mikau and Clark now making his way into the top ten. The team Milo boss man as they go through three once again. Trying not to kick up too much dust on the exit because you'll pick up that incident point. As we said, jumping back up to the front, though, we've got Perez tucked in behind uh, Simonson once again with Espez, Anderson, Grebstad and Snell. This front six doing away with it. I tell you what, Corey, I'm going to play a little bit of crystal ball gazing here, and I I'm worried about that line Espez takes into turn one. He cuts in very early. Uh, to a sharp apex at turn one. I'm just wondering if that line will bring a couple of these people unstuck. It's uh, it's an interesting, seems to be working for him though. Uh, although that last exit out of that final corner there, not his best. As we see Simonson and Perez still leading this one with the balance of seven laps to go now as they come into turn one at the start of lap 12. Well, Alex, that just speaks to the different star driving styles of the different drivers. Some people like an earlier apex, some people like the later apex, and uh, people like me just tend to go with wherever the car will let me. Um, it looks like Esbez just really prefers that earlier uh, apex. He wants to run out wide on the corner and try and gather up as mu much momentum as he can 
on the outside of the exit, which is not a bad strategy to have, but it's not generally the fastest way around. And uh, just as we were looking at that second pack before, I was just having a little bit of a squiz behind them, Alex, and uh, in P11 is our number one play to cover, Mr. Timmy Gorkrocher, recovering very well after that earlier spin, which dropped him all the way down to the back of the pack. Christian Kabanka right on his tail as well, Alex. Yeah, the two drivers there having a bit of a battle amongst themselves, of course, as they try to recover what they can. They're about 1.6 seconds off the back of that second pack there, led by uh, Sebastian Schultz once again, uh, with Clark now on the tail end of that, no doubt having an eye on the split or the relative times and uh, his mirrors at the same time. Uh, with Gorkrocher and Kabanka, two quick drivers chasing them up, but that pack just in front of them is getting fairly racy as well oh, as we see Mikau now he's pulled out to the outside behind Bladden with Schultz now looking to make a, a run for it oh is this gonna how's this gonna work out they've managed to make it work they've just fitted in there now it's Clark looking to get involved oh the two of them can they yeah they've managed to go side by side now on the approach to three will they leave enough room I think they will compromised entry there for Mikau Glad I'm leaving enough room for him and Clark with the run now. Oh, as you see Gorkrocher spewing across the track on the exit of three there that time round. But uh, these guys still making it work, but at the expense perhaps of Sebastian Schultz, who might have just got away, or I think he has, Alex, but uh, I've just got to give a quick shout out to Macau there. Never before have I seen an outside pass at turn one work as nicely as it did for him just then. Uh, that was an incredible move that he just pulled on Bladden and uh, you know he should be very proud of himself but again that just stems back to what I was saying earlier Alex the harder that these two are going to fight each other the more that Sebastian Schultz is going to get away from them and the less likely that they're going to catch that front pack of six which is still currently being led by Benny Simonson as uh, the gaps have started to grow a little bit here Alex uh, Ben Snell's worked his way up into P4 Paul Congreb said still a P5. It looks like Lee Anderson's been dropped all the way back down to P6 at the moment. Yeah, we missed a couple of moves there while we were, while we were watching. There's a tongue twister for you. While we were watching the secondary racing going on the midfield of this this race here, uh, but we still do have a, a front pair of Simpson and Perez out in front with Espes, the second of the Iberian drivers there, with the leading ANZ driver there, Ben Snell. He's tucked into P4 now, making his move for the later stages. We've got four and a half laps to go here as they're out in the twisty sections through six, seven, and eight now on the mid stages of lap 14 of 18 here tonight. It's pretty much flat once you uh, you come out of uh, turn seven, eight, and this turn nine here, uh, a flat stick in fourth gear by the time you exit turn nine. Coming into turn 10, you might have hit fifth. If you're lucky, then back down into fourth gear. Let it swing very wide. Try not to pick up too much dirt in the incident point that sits out there. I'll tell you what, Espes is moving uh, left to right on that circuit, trying to chase draft to Simpson in front. Snell, what's he going to do this time? Is he going to look up the inside? Espes taking the offensive and defensive line makes the move up the inside of Perez this time it locks the brake the rear of the car stepping out Perez does fantastically well to both avoid that and retain second position great driving there from uh, Perez it has to be said with uh, Espes uh, costing himself a position Snell taking full advantage call that's exactly right Alex and that's what I said that Ben Snell is really good at before he will look for them to start making the mistakes and he'll start to capitalize on him. And it was a very tight squeeze for him on the inside of the three wide there. And uh, he made it work. Now, Espez probably a little bit dirty with himself for locking up the brakes like that. He is hounding the gearbox of Ben Snell right now. He wants to get that third place back, Alex, and he wants to try and battle for this lead. But uh, Ben Snell, not one to just lay over and let bygones be bygones. He's going to be fighting it out now with only the balance of about three laps left to go when they get to the start finish line yeah absolutely i'll tell you what uh it was that tight line that i thought brought espes unstuck there uh and again fantastic driving there from perez uh he was very hard on himself after making uh race ending mistakes 
towards the end of last season. But uh, fantastic uh, allowances there made for Espes, who, who really chucked it up the inside there on that narrow line that he takes in. What we'll do here, Snell defending from Espes up the inside with Perez in front. Oh, I tell you what, they managed to make those cars fit where I didn't think they could. And Espes this time getting it done around the outside of turn one. Second time we've seen that move done tonight by two different drivers. And Espes, he's back in the top three, Corey. That's right, Alex. And it was another very well executed move around the outside too. He picked up the draft of the two leaders while Ben was on the defensive line, uh, completely draftless, and uh, took advantage of that. Practically had the move made before they got into the corner and executed it well. As just behind Ben now, we got uh, Lee Anderson and Hawk and Grebstad battling it out for the fifth position now. Looks like Hawkon's going to uh, take the advantage back in that little battle, but Hawkon. Losing the battle of the chocolate milk drinks uh, as far as uh, that little uh, Aussie battle we got going on there with Ben Snell still being in fourth. You can see Perez still trying to just break the draft of the cars behind and the car in front, not wanting to battle it out yet. I reckon Perez is going to try and wait until that very last lap, Alex, because that's where he's going to have the fullest advantage to try and make that move work as Ben Snell trying to battle back to get that third place back. He tasted what it was like to be on the podium. He wants to try and get it back, but there is a little bit of a side-by-side -side going on just in front. And it looks like Ben Snell not going to be able to make that outside move work, although he definitely gave it the college try there, Alex. Tell you what, there's some driving going on in this pack. You know, uh, down into turn five last lap, you had Snell defending from uh, Grebstad and Anderson. The three of them put on a spectacular controlled display of driving there, nose to tail throughout. What can they do this time round as they run down the hill into turn five this time? The rear of the car stepping out, they pull it up tight. Espes around the outside now, defending from Snell into the next corner at six. Snell, look at him, he's lifting. You can see him wanting to drive. He can't hold it flat there because uh, Espes in front. You can't drive through the car, of course, here and get away with it, but uh, it's still Simonson. Simonson losing this race from Perez. They've, he's led it for so many of the laps that we've seen already here tonight. What can he do in the last lap? Is this time they're coming around the final corner, setting up the move into turn one. Who will it be here? I guess uh, Perez has got the, uh, the run here. Simonson for the first time in a long time taking a defensive line. He forces Perez to the outside. Espes similarly, he's going to force Snell to the outside into turn one, no doubt. Absolutely he does. As Anderson looks up the outside of Grebstad, who takes the defensive line. Espes now, he's got the run. Is the over-under on for Snell? No, it isn't. It's Simonson holding Perez to the outside line. Oh, there's contact there. Both of them got away with it, but what's that going to mean for Espes? He's going to come across to the inside, almost into the rear of Perez there. Oh, I tell you what, they've got away with that one, that's for sure. Perez and Simonson, Espes now trailing up the rear. He's come crossed over to the outside of the track, look to the inside of turn five now. Oh, there's a bit of an echo there. Espes has been turned around. How did he pull that one up? Snell's gone around with the... Uh, Touch of Grebstad into turn five. Oh, it's all coming. A cropper. They've driven so well. And now the nose to tail action. Uh, Sim Perez into the back of uh, Simonson. Sorry, Simonson in the back of Perez. I'll tell you what, we're going to have to go back a little bit later. There's so much going on there. But we see, uh, we see now Perez on the front of Simonson. Simonson will have a look up this final corner now. See Matthew Thomas in the pits. Perez forced to go around the outside. He can't get it done, but too much gravel there. And it, we will see Simonson. Simonson comes across the line to take out the first round of Sunday Nights for Sunday Night Lights for season 20. I tell you what, Corey, that last lap, there was a bit going on there. And that's what we've come to expect from this racing. Also, very close battle between the two chocolate milk drink cars, Alex. There must have been about a nose and a front wheel in it. Uh, very close margins. And uh, these guys, they just put on a driving display. How they all did not just crash together and fall into a crumble heap in a wall somewhere, I will never know. But uh, incredible racing by all six of those gentlemen at the front of the pack. Yeah, we're just watching the last lap action there on the approach. Out of one, down to, through two, and into turn three. There was contact between Simonson and Perez there. And then Espes looking for any way he could to get through. 
uh, really went to the left and right. I don't think he hampered Snell too much there. Uh, but then uh, we see it all unfold here. There was so much going on there. It was hard to know where to look. We might slow it down here as they came through down into turn five now. This is where it all unfolded. Oh, look, I don't know if there was contact there or not. Looked pretty clear. A bit of net code there, I think, between Snell and Espes has caused the rear of the uh, Iberian driver to step out. I can't believe he hang on to that. He hung on to it, I should say. Uh, and then you see Snell look to go up the inside there with an over-under. And that, oh, look, Espes is coming back on. There's forced Anderson wide. And then uh, Grebstad into the rear of Snell. Uh, again, probably a little bit of net code there, the Norwegian into the back of the ANZ driver. And then um, bits of uh, Ovaltine car strewn all over the place. And then um, as we carried on, oh, and then uh, Espez into Anderson. A little bit more contact then. Simonson later on the brakes than Perez into six there. A uh, little touch in the rear. And then that pretty much, folks, was all she wrote. Uh, might follow the two, uh, the Ovaltine and Milo boys this time round, because we saw what happened up front. Beautiful sliding car there from uh, Simonson uh, out of uh, nine there as they approach the final corner. We saw Simonson look up the inside, get a beautiful move done there on Perez, which eventually got in the victory. Beautiful, forced Perez around the outside. Perez grabbing a little bit too much dirt, as we see there. The rear of the car stepping out. No drive out of the corner means Simonson goes on to win this one. And then we see, oh, a little bit of net code contact there as the side draft looking to get employed by Snell. And oh, I'll tell you what, not much in that between Ovaltine and Milo this week. And uh, the boys had the elbows out in the last lap, that's for sure, Corey. Yeah, that's right, Alex. I'm just having a look at it now. And uh, the margin of uh, victory between Hawkon and Ben Snell is literally up until just about the rear of the rim of Mr. Grebstad's car. Uh, so very close margins um, indeed. Only about, oh, not even a full, uh, not even half a second. It's about 0.0. I'm just going to say 0.03 of a second was the margin between them for third place there. So very close margins indeed. These guys have absolutely turned up the heat for week one, Alex. It's going to be crazy to see what they can do for an entire season if this is the level of action that we can expect to see. But uh, it looks like we've got a couple of people that want to have a little bit of a chat to us here, Alex. Yeah, I've just had the call from the, from the peanut gallery that the second pack action on the last lap was pretty good. So just before we bring people up and check the results, let's check turn one. Although they've got three wide in there. Oh, side by side. Not going to work there. The 16 car. Uh, Min, uh, uh, what do we say? Mick out. Oh, he's nearly been flipped on his lead there. Oh, I got into Kabanka in the eight in the eighteen car who's probably caused all that blood and he's uh part of the Red Seas for the team Milo boss Russell Clark to drive away with it. That's uh that's one for the books there and uh Clark and Bladen go on to finish nine and ninth and tenth respectively. So fair uh fair fairly expected action I should say on the last lap there at turn one, but uh exciting nonetheless. Let's go through our final results now for round one here at summer point raceway for season 20 of sun and lights who thought we'd get this far p1 tonight taking out the first round was uk and i's benny simonson uh fantastic driving i thought there were a couple of pieces there between he and perez which were you know tough hard racing there at the end but throughout they both raced really hard and pretty fair i thought p2 tonight went to the aforementioned christian perez from iberia and I think he might be from across Simart Competition as well. Folks, if you do want to get your team name up there, you just need to register it on the Top Split Discord server and we'll make sure it's in the overlays each week. Congratulations to Benny Simonson and Christian Perez for taking out the top two steps. Third step on the podium tonight went to Hawk and Grebstad leading the chocolate milk drink for Team Oval Team here tonight. Just ahead of the big rivalry there between them and Team Milo's Ben Snell, the leading ANZ driver there at an MP4. Pablo Espez put on a show tonight. Different lines. He attacked 
anywhere he could uh, and managed to hang on after an eventful final lap for P5 tonight for R70 team. And P6 went to the puce-coloured Lee Anderson from UK and I, who had an eventful last lap as well, Sebastian Schultz. He uh, broke away from that second pack, finished in P7 tonight uh, after... Uh, you know, quite an eventful race himself. Speaking of eventful races, top split racing, Tim Gorkrocher, the number one plated car here tonight, down four positions in P8 after that lap one altercation or incident, I should say. P9 went to the Team Milo Boss Man after that turn one final lap. Uh, Mr. Russell Clark taking out P9, well inside the top 10, of course. Jack Bladden from UK and I making his debut to Sunday Night Lights, finishing in P10. Manuel Lucchetta from Italy, and I think he's from Thrustmaster Mivano Racing in P11 tonight. P12 from Iberia, Rodrigo Cano Alcares rounding out the points for Sunday Night Lights. As we go over the page, Quinton Mikau making his debut in P13 tonight. P14 was Sitz Sites Geron Hartvelt. And that's probably the one and only time I'm going to get that anything close to correct. Uh, P15 tonight went to Bruce De Carvalho from ANZ. P16, John Skoltz, the final team. Milo, driver, not the result he was looking for. Christian Kabanka, similarly for Breaking Bad Motorsports, down a lap in P17. Matthew Thomas, similarly down a lap. For ANZ in P18 and Enzo Cantor after two trips through the pits, 15 laps down for Thrustmaster Mivano racing in P19. Strength field tonight, 38 49. Very healthy start to the season with over 200 drivers registered for the race. And the fastest lap, 1 minute 20.364. No doubt draft assisted, but it goes to Team Milo's Ben Snell tonight. Corey, fantastic racing out there and uh, certainly a good one to kick us off. Yeah, that's right, Alex. I mean, Grabstad might have won the uh, battle on the track, but uh, Ben Snell winning it in the timesheets, uh, I reckon that one would have to be called a draw then, wouldn't you say? <laughs> It'd be pretty close. Um, there'll be certainly some bragging rights in that, if uh, nothing out, although I'm sure there'll be uh, calls of draft track and all the rest of it, but uh, we'll leave that to the boys to sort out. Now, um as we grab a, uh, a replay, I might turn that down. We'll um, we'll go in uh, finishing order as is our way for the interviews. We'll bring up Mr. Uh, Mr. Christian Perez. Christian, that uh, was a better way to uh, to finish a race. Quite exciting up the front there, and just uh, got elbows out there at the end, but uh, looked like a bit of fun anyway. Hey, hello guys. Uh, good night to you. And uh, yeah. Uh was fun and difficult to manage. Uh, I was trying the whole race to maintain that second place. Uh, just not for for forcing uh, a three white in on the future, on the lap 18, on the lap uh, 17, so I can manage the second and attack on last lap. But well, almost, almost. <laughs> <laughs> that's it look uh, I thought there was a couple of times there he's displayed some brilliant uh, skill there uh, saw Espez go up the inside of one there and overcook it a bit at one point and you left enough room to get through not only cleanly but then uh, then uh, hold on to P2 at the, same, at the same time really skillful driving there and I know you were disappointed with how you finished last season in the race but certainly a great drive here tonight mate so congratulations on P2 Thank you, Alex. Brilliant. All right, mate. Well, while we've got uh, you here, is there anyone uh, anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, well, to my to my red, to my connection of internet. Uh, he he work very well uh, right now. It's like uh, doing very bad uh, three races ago. And well, I just pray for this race to work all of it and yes it's for for the connection <laughs> for the connection <laughs> i dig it for my connection <laughs> <laughs> very good all right mate well thank you once again for joining us uh, hopefully we'll see you a few more times this season as it's it's a great platform to build uh, points in the official season and hopefully you can have a red hot go at it okay sure uh ciao guys see you
There you go, Corey. Christian Perez joining us once again. Uh, he's got the Across Simart Competition uh, livery on there. Uh, I assume that's the uh, the team that he races for, and he's he's doing a good job. I tell you, there's a guy who's really picked up his pace in the last couple of seasons, and most of it's been through elbow grease. Uh, hard work out there on track from what I've witnessed, and he's really now put himself up uh, amongst the top drivers in the category. Well, that's exactly right, Alex, and I strongly suspect that by the time the we come to the end of this season, he's going to be one of those lower-plated cars that is just going to be just about unbeatable when it comes to racing at just about any track because he's just been going from strength and strength, and he's just been improving the entire time, and it's been great to see. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, our next driver, oh, we have to bring him in finishing order. So our next driver, Mr. Hawk on Grebstead for Team Ovaltine, managed to grab a podium there at the uh, at the end, mate. There was some plenty of action on that last lap, though. Oh, there was. That was one hell of a last lap, wasn't it? Yeah, mate, it looks like uh, there was plenty going on and the uh, little bit of elbows out there between the Ovaltine and Milo boys on that final lap. But I guess at that stage of the race, most of the bets are off anyway. Yeah, I, I, I said sorry to Ben for the for the tap, but in all in all, I think it was a little bit of net code and yeah, final lap. Yeah, and I, I, I wasn't given that position. Nah, look, you're right. I think there was a touch of net code in that one. And the it, look, it's hard to maintain the line and the speed with any sort of consistency because it's not a consistent lap at that point. You had cars going everywhere, different lines trying to take advantage of little openings here and there. And it's the last lap of the biggest race of the week. What more can you expect? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm happy Ben held on to it, though, that he didn't ruin this race. Um, yeah, he definitely had a chance for third. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Well, congratulations. Great way to start the season uh, and with a podium. Uh, great launching pad. A couple of hundred official championship points, about 60-odd I rating. Uh, got to be happy with that. Yeah, I couldn't be happy with the third. Awesome finish. I was really surprised at my qualifying, though. That was a real big surprise. Yeah, mate, right up there. In fact, P2, that's an outstanding outstanding drive because you've struggled a little bit in quality in the last season or so, so perhaps that's a sign of more things to come. So congratulations again, mate. Um, uh, anyone you'd like to give a shout-out to before we let you go? Well, i got to give Dennis a shout-out for doing all our paints and all that stuff and uh, and uh, you guys for doing the, uh, the broadcast. Awesome as always. Thanks, Hawkorn. Much appreciated, and we'll talk to you in the coming weeks. Take care, guys. There you go, Corey. Welcome, Gribstad. I think he's right. There's a bit of net code there, and there was. I'll tell you what. You'd be you'd be lucky to to know. You know, up from down in the middle of that racing in that last lap. Anyway, um, I was really impressed throughout at the uh, proximity of which guys were able to race so hard. And so, uh, look, uh, no hard feelings there. I'm sure. And the boys finished third and fourth respectively. Anyway. Well, that's exactly right, Alex. And as I said, you know, it's an amazing feat that they all didn't end up as a crumbled mess against one of the walls because they were driving so close together and the net code was going wild. But, you know, it's great to see Hawkon actually have a solid race from start to finish, like right from qualifying. He was on pace and he was up front the whole time. He wasn't at the back battling his way through and getting you know, an all right result. He was at the front and he was there battling the entire race right from qualifying, which is absolutely great to see uh, Hawkon making such a great start to the season. Yeah, mate, he struggled a bit with the tyre model and been a bit vocal about that as well, but uh, good to see him finding his feet. Now we've got uh, our next guest here tonight is, in fact, our race winner, Benny Simonson. Benny, it's been a while since you and I caught up, but uh, great to see you uh, on the top stage step of the podium here and what was a really hard fought race i thought it looked like a lot of fun i'm hoping it was yeah it's um it's quite an intense track so um yeah quite quite hard win but um <laughs> got a bit messy at the end but they, they all count yeah absolutely i thought uh you and christian had a good chance to get away there potentially although the drafts here pretty strong i thought uh espez was making himself pretty busy in that mid pack and it might give you two a chance to run away but uh certainly that last lap uh there were six cars in it i think yeah down to anderson uh there were cars going everywhere and mostly in the right direction which was great but uh you know was it fun out there for the opener for the season yeah, there is. Uh, 
it's 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 fun track because it's obviously quite a busy track with the with the draft. But uh, yeah, the last lap was um, I think there was quite a bit of net code on it really because there was a weird weird contact coming out of turn one and then uh, again weird contact. Uh, I think it was me and Ben in 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 the hairpin and then the next ride as well. There was a uh, I didn't get any contact, but my nose fell off in the in the I think it's turn five. So. Um, yeah, uh, but I guess with this, with the with the server and the time zone different, there's always going to be a bit of uh, net code. Yeah, absolutely. There's not much you can do about that. But uh, but you know, part of that is the price we pay for uh, for racing on uh, on an international scale. You know, and uh, you know, for me, it's a small price to pay when you get to have that much fun and and uh, look, it looked like a lot of fun out there and hopefully people seeing this will uh, get the message that the skip barbers are still a lot of fun uh, and join us uh, join us for the coming weeks. Uh, speaking of which, mate, thank you for joining us. Is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to before we let you go? Um, no, <laughs> just uh, you guys, but uh, yeah, all good. Much appreciated. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Benny. Look forward to talking to you soon, mate, and uh, seeing you uh, on a track and a broadcast uh, in the coming weeks. See you, guys. There you go, Corey. In the midst of that, I lost my overlays and all sorts of things, but uh, it was great to see Benny Simonson joining us here. He's a real-world driver, of course, and instructor. He's a former 24-hour of spa winner in real life and uh, one of my old uh, podcast guests as well. Uh, really enjoyed talking to Benny. It's a good listen. It's up on YouTube now if you uh, check the, the uh, podcast playlist. Uh, and Benny's a good fella. Of course, he spent some time in ANZ. He held the uh, the track record of Bathurst for a while in, uh, in a Ferrari uh, in the category. I can't remember it. So uh, certainly uh, got some experience to, to put on display here tonight, Corey. Well, that's exactly right, Alex, and his experience definitely showed. Uh, he knew just where to place his car at the right time, and when he got overtaken, you know, he didn't just sit there and cop it. He was immediately looking for another way to get back around and get the lead back, and uh, you know, he was managed to be able to do it, which is uh, incredible considering he'd done it on the shortest straight that was on the track. But uh, you know, it was a great job all around. You know, qualified on pole and ran away with it for most of the race. So uh, you know, he's done you know, an amazing job like he always does. And it'd be great to see him uh, come back and, you know, all the rest of the weeks, maybe try and battle for the championship. I know his schedule might not allow for it if he does uh, end up going back to real world racing, but uh, it'd be interesting to see what he could do if he was with us for an entire season. Yeah, absolutely. Might even take out the whole show, mate, which would be great. Um, our final interview tonight, of course, is uh, our fourth place getter making a successful return to the other side of the camera, as we said, Mr. Ben Snell on the uh, the Bunnings chair I can hear in the background. Uh, he managed P4 tonight and quite an eventful finish to the race, mate. Did you have fun out there? Yeah, g'day, Alex. G'day, Corey. It's um, it's great to be back. We're a little bit more comfortable <laughs> in the driver's seat. Um, oh, man, that, that last few laps was absolutely amazing. It was so much fun. And... Um, of course, you know, you can trust the guys around you a lot more uh, being a, um, a strength of field race with the guys you race with a lot and, of course, motor a lot and be motored by a lot. So, you know, it's coming and when it's coming, but it's all in good fun. Yeah, that's it, mate. That was quite a, an amazing last lap. It was sort of seeing Espes taking that unique line into turn one. He's sort of really charging at the apex there a couple of times. Uh, and then, you know, the proximity between you, he, and a couple of the other drivers there was amazing. It was uh, just a testament to you, you, the guys up front and, and that it didn't come unstuck. And everyone actually finished the race, uh, you know, a little bit uh, a panel damage here or there. But uh, certainly, like you say, uh, having had a good time out, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, that that going up the uh, uphill on the last lap, I was actually riding the brake so I had the, the, the throttle mashed and I was just like modulating the brake behind Pablo, just going, hurry up, man, go, go, go. Cause you can see Grevo right behind me. And then we've gone bloody almost three wide into the, uh, the downhill there. And um, unfortunately it was a little bit of a net code touch between myself and Pablo, which um, sent him off to the side. And then uh, Grevo gave me a little bit of a net code touch into the, uh, into the rear. But of course that's the price of uh, racing with the guys on the other side of the world. And it's amazing. It's an amazing testament to the fact that we can, race so aggressively and so close together and it works 99% of the time. 
Yeah, absolutely. We just uh, had those images on screen of that incident you were talking about. I was stunned that Espes hung on to it, to be honest with you. I mean, it did cost Anderson in the end, who had to run wide and picked up a bit of grass. And then here we go. We just see the Ovaltine sign coming into the beer back of the go and go and go and leaving its mark. But uh, yeah, look, unfortunate as it was. A little bit of net code there in both cases, I think. Uh, but as you say, price we pay for a good night out on track. So hopefully, mate, uh, that's the sign of things to come in terms of the racing and the results for your good self uh, and the rest of the field that joins us here on a Monday night. Now, before we let you go, is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to? Of course, massive shout out to you guys for putting on the broadcast. Um, it's now being able to see it from the other side of the camera. It makes it definitely makes me appreciate it much more. The amount of um, work and effort that goes into um, what you guys do every week, and um, how slick of a job and uh, presentation that you guys make. Um, and of course, big shout out to Team Milo. We're going to be uh, pinching good self as well this weekend for the uh, the uh, twenty four hours of Le Mans. And uh, we should have a good, hopefully, have a good showing and a good battle against Ovaltine again for that one. Yeah, looking forward to that as well, mate. And before you to praise the production quality too highly, there's been a couple of hiccups. But hey, it's the first week at 12. We've got a, a couple of months to, to redeem ourselves, but no, the, the, the on-track action speaks for itself. So congratulations, Ben, and uh, look forward to talking to you in the coming weeks. Cheers, guys. Yeah, Corey, Mr. Ben Snell, who I'll be joining, as he said, on uh, on the weekend for the big 24 hours of Le Mans. Looking forward to that one uh, tremendously, uh, getting out there and having another crack at the big big time. Uh, what about yourself, Corey? What's, uh, what's keeping you busy this week? Uh, well, on Tuesday, I've got the uh, round two of um, the Fastlane Esports uh, Winter Series. Uh, we're doing, I'm pretty sure it's going to be the late model this week, the pro late model and the 410 sprint car. So we're bringing out the big boys this season for fast lane esports. Uh, Wednesday over at the Aussie Sim commentator channel, twitch.tv forward slash Aussie underscore Sim underscore commentator. Uh, we got the next round of uh, output racing league uh, from Chicago land. I do believe it is. Uh, I don't actually have too much other than that planned. We've got, of course, the uh, Friday night race club shenanigans this week. Uh, with V8 supercars and the Bathurst 200, which I'm pretty sure we're using the Porsche 911 Cup car. And uh, actually on Saturday, I've started up a, another league broadcast. Uh, this one's going to be for the USANZ Racing League. And uh, I'm pretty sure that one will also, uh, just like output, be from the Chicago Land Speedway. So very busy week for me here this week, Alex. Absolutely. Uh, go check out all of Corey's stuff as we overlay where you can find us on the uh, the closing stages of this race. You might even be able to check out the winning move up the inside of the final corner there from Mr. Simmonson, who we're on board with. But, folks, that's where you can find us all. Uh, the YouTube channel, of course, is where this race replay will be uploaded. The Discord is where we do the race broadcast and interviews from. Also, duck in there to register your team name uh, against your driver name, and we'll make sure you're represented in the overlays. Top Split TV, of course, is a Twitch channel you're finding yourself on now or at another stage if you're watching the replay and where we do the broadcast from each and every week. Snellavision, who was, of course, in here before. And Corey Has No Life 13, as well as Aussie Sim Commentator is where the uh, Corey does his broadcast as well. So, But, folks, that'll about do us for tonight. Thank you for joining us uh, at home and on track. It's been great having you here for the start of another season of Sunday Night Lights. And until next time, I've been your host, Alex McKellar, and on behalf of the chaotic one, Mr. Corey Steinhauser, it's ciao for now. <laughs>